using shared agents with CloudBees CI. With CloudBees CI, there's a feature called Shared Agents that allows you to define an agent on an operation center that is able to be used on any controller connected to that operation center without having to configure that agent directly on the controller. Here's today's starting point. I have an operation center and I have two controllers connected to this operation center. When the operation center and the controllers were installed, they were installed using install suggested plugins. There is a link to the shared agent documentation down in the description of this video. So let's click around here for just a second. What we can see here on the operation center, I have two controllers. I have one that's called CC1 inside a project A folder, and I have a CC2 inside of a project B folder. And let's click over to the All tab just to understand a little bit better what we have going on here. We have a controllers folder. Within the controllers folder, we have a project A folder that has CC1. And also we have a project B folder that has CC2. Now let's go ahead and define our shared agent at the root of our operation center. So let's go ahead and click on dashboard. I'll click back over to all so we can see that we're now at the root of the operation center. Now let's go over to new item. I'm gonna give it the name of Mac. The type is gonna be shared agent and I'm going to click on okay. For this agent is gonna be one executor. My remote FS root is gonna be users slash depoke slash, what am I going to use? OC dash shared dash agent. I'm gonna make it unique. I'm just gonna say two, three, four. My label is gonna be Mac OS. The usage will be use this node as much as possible. My launch method, much like a normal agent, I'm going to pick SSH in my case, 192.168.1.2. I'm going to add some credentials. I have username password, so I'm going to just type in my credentials here. And my ID is going to be, what am I going to use for my ID? I am going to use, we'll say depot dash MB P and the description is dash MBP. So I'm connecting up to a MacBook Pro. And we'll click on add, that's selected. Manually verify, we're gonna to change to non-verifying just for this example. And then the availability, take note offline when idle, which is what we want to do in this case. Now for normal agents, you would typically leave that set to keep this agent online as much as possible. But the default for shared agents, take it offline when it's idle. So also, unlike other agents that you would typically connect to your controllers, which are also known as maybe static agents, those agents will always show up on the left nav bar under build executors, so you can see the agents. A shared agent, on the other hand, is just a definition of an agent. You're not going to see it anywhere except for when it's being used. So let's go ahead and click on save. And you'll notice it says take online after saving, but what that really means is it's online from the perspective of it's online to be used. That doesn't mean that it's actually online and doing anything, it's just online and available. Think of it like a library book. I can't check out a library book that's behind the counter, that hasn't been reprocessed and put back on the shelf. Think of this at the state that we're in, this is a book that's on the shelf that I can now use. So we can say that it's available for lease, so we can see that. If we go back up to the root of the operation center, also notice that we don't see the agent here because it's actually not connected to the operation center. It is just a definition of a shared agent that is defined on the operation center. So we have our Mac, we have it at the top level. Let's go over to one of our controllers where I already have a job set up. In fact, I have two jobs set up. I have a, the same job, set up on both of my controllers. So I'm gonna click on the test job and let's review it just so we can see what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I've got a pipeline agent label Mac OS, that's the label that we assign that shared agent. And I'm just going to run Xcode build dash version just to see what version of Xcode that we have installed. And then notice I have a sleep. And I've put the sleep in on this specific job. The job over on the other controller doesn't have the sleep. But what I want you to see is how this works. And I just needed some time so I can walk you through that. So we'll go ahead and click on save. And let's go and click on build now. 
Now, once it actually starts up, we'll take a look at the output of the job. And what we will see is that this controller will effectively check out that agent, attach itself to this controller to do the work. We can see our Xcode build version is now 9.2, and now we're in our sleep. We can see that we're running Mac on this controller right now, but it's connected up to OC Shared Agent 234, which was our definition. If we take a look at CC1, we can see here now that the Mac is connected to our controller and the job is still running. Let's go up to our operation center real quick. And if we take a look at our Mac, we can see it's yellow. And if we click into it, we can say that the node is leased to controllers project a CC1 and it's been online for 40 seconds. You also see the link here that's force release. For some reason, if it gets stuck and you ever need to force a release of that agent, you can force it from the operation center. Let's refresh this page. We can see that we're at roughly one minute, but if you think about it for a moment, we, our sleep was 60 seconds from the time it got to the sleep. So this will take a little bit longer because it took about eight seconds probably to get to that point of the sleep. One more time for a refresh. We're at 115. Okay, maybe a little bit longer than eight seconds. We'll refresh it one more time. And now we can see that we're back to available for lease. Let's go back over to our controller and see how it looks now. If we come back down to the left nav, we can see that the agent is no longer connected to CC1. And we can see that the test job did complete successfully. And just taking a quick look at it, again, Xcode build, sleep, and success. So at this point, we were able to check out that agent, connect it to our controller, run the job. And then once the job completed, success or fail, that agent is released back to the operation center. Now, just to prove this out, let's go back over to our other controller. Now, this controller has the exact same job defined. The only difference is that we are not going to have a sleep occur, just Xcode build version. So let's go ahead and save this. And what we're going to see when we click on build now, we're going to see as it starts up, we're gonna see that it is starting. We're waiting for the agent to come online, running on Mac, Xcode build 9.2 and succeeds. Now, because this happens so fast, when we go over and take a look at our executors, we don't see it because it's already complete. Now, this is great if we want all of our controllers to be able to use this agent. In this case, it's a MacBook Pro with a specific version of Xcode. But what if we only want this agent to be able to be used within a folder of controllers? How do we do that? Well, let's go back over to our operation center. We'll click back over to all. And what we're going to do is we are going to move the Mac shared agent and we're going to move it into controllers and project A. And once we click on move, it'll take just a few moments for this to go ahead and move over. But at this point, the only controller that will be able to use our Mac agent will be CC1. CC2 will not be able to access this agent any longer. Let's prove this out. We can see that the Mac is still available for lease. But if you look in the breadcrumb, you can see that Mac is under Project A. Let's click on Project A. We can see that the Mac is setting right beside CC1. If we come back up to controllers and actually to root first and click on all, the Mac isn't here at the top level anymore and CC2 doesn't have a Mac of its own. So in order for a controller to be able to use a shared agent, it has to be able to see it as it looks up the tree. So in this case, CC2's up is project B, project B is up to controllers, and controllers is up to root. So nowhere along that path did we see the Mac agent. On the other hand, if we go back over to project A, CC1 can see Mac because it's at the same level, they're peers at this point. And again, nothing here in controllers or all. So CC1 will be able to access the Mac agent. Let's prove that out. Controllers project A, CC1. 
test job. Let's modify this so we don't wait around. We'll click on configure and we'll get rid of the sleep 60 just for our example and click on build now. And what we will see as it runs is we're running on the Mac. We get our Xcode output and we're successful. Let's go back over to CC2 and let's run this job. So when we click on this job this time, since this controller has no visualizations of where this Mac agent lives by Mac OS, when we look at the console output for this job, what we're going to see is that we're waiting for the next executor. And this is telling us that it is unable to find an agent with the label of Mac OS. When might you want to use a shared agent instead of a static agent? The typical use case for a shared agent is when you have constrained resources. One example is what we just saw in this video. I want to be able to share a single Mac across multiple controllers. By creating a shared agent object on the operation center, I'm able to successfully and safely share that agent between those controllers. Not only might you have hardware constraints, but you might also have software constraints, meaning you only have a certain number of licenses for a particular piece of software. By constraining that as a shared agent, you're able to constrain the use of that agent to stay within the limits of your licensing. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.